coming out tonight. We have a small but mighty group, so we're glad that you're here. And we have a fairly tight presentation tonight, so um, you can feel free to interrupt at any point with questions. And um, I think we'll have some fun. It does appear to be a sign-in sheet, so I'll pass it around. I don't know if everybody saw it sitting over there. Is this not on? Okay, so we're going to do a quick review of the approved concept just to kind of give everybody a baseline of where we're starting. I feel like I'm echoing, but because of the filming, I think I need to use this. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about where we are now in the process, which is schematic design. So we'll share a little bit about how projects like this get developed, and then we'll talk about schedule. So, to review the approved concept, the school board approved on February 6th, the forest concept, which was named forest. Are you guys all familiar with it? Have you been following? Okay, because it goes along the woods and we're trying to get as many classrooms as possible with a view of the forest. So, this is um, the view that was approved, uh, approved by the school board. Just to review, we had gone through a process where we had collected pros and cons, and even though the cons list looks bigger, it, you know, the pros are very powerful, and so it's the winning option. Um, some major concerns were expressed during the approval process, and those are things that we'll continue to work on, along with developing the project as a whole. And that was the layout of the classrooms. Um, some people were concerned about the bar at the back that looks like single loaded classrooms and really they won't look like that once we get them into design in earnest. Um, but we do want to make note of that comment because that's something we'll continue to follow up on with you. And also the play area locations. Um, so the final space program is starts with the educational specification that's the standard guide for Alexandria Public Schools, but tailored for the enrollment for Douglas MacArthur. And so we did, we went through a process of right sizing the program. And then as we worked through it, we added three additional self contained classrooms, um, but also 85 below grade parking spaces for the school. And then we added programs for. RPCA and for Campania, and that includes offices, restrooms, storage. The gym will be bigger because we're adding bleacher seating. So it'll be the standard elementary school size gym, but it'll have bleacher space to the side and that takes up more floor space. And um, we also have a city community shared suite of spaces that will be available for a variety of uses and then parking also for our PCA. We didn't finalize the number of parking spaces yet. Yes, question. Can you just elaborate a little bit on the city community shared spaces? Because um, I think that's new for us. Mm -hmm. It's um, fairly generic space. It'll have office space, storage, a large group area that could be used for meetings. It might be something that can be divisible so that it could have two functions simultaneously. It could be used by neighborhood seniors or it could be used by a more for formal program. We're thinking it'll have a kitchenette in it or something like that too so that it's flexible and could accommodate a variety of uses. Um, it'll be near the front of the school so that it could be used simultaneously with school use. At least that's the vision that we're working towards. We haven't designed it in there yet um, because the approval is so recent we're still working on how to fit all these pieces and parts together. Yes? Would it be in space like an auditorium style or would the gym also function? So we have the stage in our program associated with the dining space. Um, elementary schools may do them either way and I think that may still be open to finalization just depending on which one is going to work better. But there will be a stage or a platform, but not anything with fixed seating that we would call an auditorium. Any other questions on the program? 
What does Jim RPC? You gotta say it. You gotta ask everything. What does RPCA stand for, please? So that's Parks and Recreation. So they're running your your parks programs, and um, so they're already running programs in the school. But we're um, kind of amping up their ability to do that well. Sarah. Yes. Yes. I'm with Recreation Parks and Cultural Activities, which is what our PCA stands Thank for. Thank you. Uh, so uh, it's for the after school programs, and then the uh, uh, bleachers uh, would be for tournaments and um, uh, activities related to sports events. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so we wanted to talk a little bit about the schematic design process. Um, so what we've got that's approved is a concept, and that's the very first step in developing the project. And that tells us generally about site placement, where's the building on the site, where do we generally want vehicles, cars, and buses, and so on. Generally, where are the play areas, but they're not fully developed. Um, the general organization of the building, we know we want community spaces at the front, we know we want classrooms towards the back. We're looking at a three-level building for the classroom part, um, but the rest of it is one or two. And the overall approach to building mass. What isn't finalized in the concept is just as important as what is. Um, the final locations of parking, the site access points. We have an approval process we need to go through um, with the city and with our civil engineer. Um, the detailed interior layout of the building, some of the articulation of the building elements. We haven't really gotten into materials yet. Um, we did some massing just so we could understand and share the concept, but we'll do more detailed massing as we move forward as well. So that is that very first step of concept, which we've now completed. So for... Ah, okay. I, I, didn't get, I didn't get introductions. Who are you? You're... Ah, sorry. <laughs> I think we've done this a few times, so yeah. I skipped that. I'm Sarah Woodhead. I'm the principal in charge of the project for DLR Group. Okay. And I'm Kwame Bailey with DLR Group as well. I'm your uh, community liaison. Okay. I have, I have a question. What is massing? So, massing is generally the um, form of the building. So, you know, we design and plan, but we need to work in all three dimensions. We also have staff here from ACPS, Paul Yumby, who's the project manager, Erica Gulick, and uh, Tiffany right. right there, and our principal, Ms. Miller. Did I miss anybody there? Okay. So, okay, so concept is completed. The next step, which is where we are now, is schematic design. So concept is kind of these bubble diagrams. We may show them as grids and blocks of spaces, but they're not really designed as spaces we can imagine going into yet. They're still kind of fitting onto a plan. In schematics, we begin to draw the walls with two lines of thickness and recognize that they are walls and not just areas and we look at them in relation to each other. On our concept, things are generally to scale in a very rough sense. We get them much more specifically to scale in schematic design. Um, I'm showing you two dimensions, but I'll show you an example in a minute that kind of gives a little more detail about what Douglas MacArthur will look like at the end of schematic design as we roll through more and more detail, and we kind of build it up in layers. After concept, after concept and schematic, we move into design development. And design development, we're actually going to sit down and figure out where the casework goes, how do we fit the right number of library books in the library media center, um, the kitchen equipment, everything gets laid out in great detail in design development, which is the next phase. So we finished this on February 6th. Now, between where we are now and the end of April, we'll complete schematic. Design development will take us through August, and then we'll do construction documents. So, for all intents and purposes, the design is really thoroughly worked out by the time we complete DDs. And CDs is really the practice of converting all that design thinking into a set of instructions for a contractor. 
the CDs actually become the legal document that gives the contractor the direction for what they're going to build. So, you know, we start more loose, we get tighter and tighter as we go. Um, we start more general, we get more and more specific as we go. So right now we're in the very beginning, in the first couple of weeks of schematic design. So, you know, this is, this is all an example from other projects because we haven't done this yet for Douglas MacArthur. So we'll be excited to come back and share when we have, and I, I think we're all excited about that, but there's a lot of work we need to do to get to that point, and we're in the middle of that work now, but we don't have it yet. So in schematic design, which will continue through April, we'll resolve the overall site organization and the traffic flow. We'll have our general landscape approach resolved. Our building massing, the shape, the form will be resolved. Floor plan layouts will be very much more specific with the double lines for the walls and so on. Our overall approach to building materials will be identified. We'll know what kind of mechanical systems we're going to use for heating, ventilating, air conditioning. And we'll have our net zero energy strategy in place too, which we've already been thinking about and working on, but we'll have, we'll have done the calculations to know what our strategy is. So that'll be resolved by the time we complete schematics. What won't be resolved by the time we complete schematics will still be detailing the site plans in much greater levels of detail. Uh, our stormwater and landscape plans will still need further development into design development. The floor plans will get ever more detailed. Telephone closets, where do the equipment racks go? Um, you know, where do the built-in cases go? Where do shades go on the windows and so on? Building materials and, ele and elevations, what the walls look like from the inside and the outside, those will be developed further in design development. And mechanical systems will actually be designed, not just identified, it's going to be this kind of system or that kind, but the ductwork and the louvers and all that stuff will be developed in the next phase and our net zero approach will be obviously much more detailed. So we're really at the beginning of the design process. And it's an exciting process. Our timeline is short, so it's going to be very intense. I wanted to show you an example of a completed design. This is not Douglas MacArthur. This is a school we just completed in um, the District of Columbia just to show you kind of what you can expect in April time frame as we're completing the schematic design. So this is a site plan. You can see the building mass, uh, the roofs, um, the play areas, the parking, everything is to scale and detail. Stormwater management is identified and so on. And it's kind of a pretty enough picture to start to get really excited about. Floor plans, Again, you know, hard line, double line, you can see all the closets, all the rooms are labeled, everything's to scale. And at each milestone, we'll do a comparison of what we've drawn versus what the approved program is. And usually you're allowed a little wiggle room, maybe 5%, bigger or smaller, just so things line up. But we'll highlight any differences that come up along the way so that that can be checked. Elevations, we'll have identified materials that are likely to be used and we'll be able to show you what the building looks like from the outside. Where is it glass? Where is it masonry? Where is it panel? And, um, you know, in order to do that, we'll come up with options along the way so that those can be vetted. So that's what a schematic design is and we're at the very beginning of that. Any questions on, on that? During schematic design, will you propose maybe two different um, schemes for the exterior design? Or will you just develop one exterior scheme and present that? We probably will present some main thoughts with variations, if that makes sense, rather than two completely different ones. Um, but we'll talk generally about materials first, and then we'll work on different ways to apply them.
So by the time we had completed these elevations, we had already discussed options with our client and um, knew what their preferences were and so on. Any other questions on what a schematic design is? So we try not to use jargon, but sometimes we do. So a schematic, we call an SD for schematic design. We'll call design development DDs. So if I do that, you can say don't do that because it's really better to use the words, I think. And then CDs are construction documents. Okay. So in terms of schedule, I think you've seen this before. Um, we will tweak it as we go to make sure we're getting the right input at the right time. And since you're here in early schematics, I think we want to come back again when we get farther so that you can see it again before we're complete with the process. So this part of the graph shows concepts and these are, are the meetings that we've had and, and the approval of the school board is denoted here. Um, SD, we have two community meetings, two advisory group, and two school meetings. And like I said, we may wind up adjusting that a little bit. That's one of the things we're working on now. And then DDs is very intensive with the school because we're really working on the interior layouts of all the spaces. So there's a little less community engagement, although again, this may change a little bit. Um, but very intense school engagement because um, those are the folks who are going to live in the building and we need to understand um, their processes and procedures to make sure that we're meeting their needs. And then CDs is really all about producing those documents um, for contracting purposes, but we do want to come back and keep everybody updated as we go. And then construction, again, is a matter of updating. Any questions on this part of the schedule? Here comes the mic. So on this timeline, is it possible that the construction design wouldn't be approved until January 2021? Um, well, we are working through the DSUP process and, um, you know, I don't have all the details on that, but uh, we are targeting the submission in September and approval around then. So that's a work in progress. Erica, do you want to add more on that? So this, the um, DSUP process, the city process, the development special use permit process is what anyone has to go through when they're developing a new site. And it requires several submissions. So this first phase in kind of determining the concept was critical um, to move us into the schematic design phase, which will give us our initial um, submission towards that process. The public hearing, the city council vote, and the planning commission vote, those things, um, after going through the several submissions, were targeting to happen in September. Uh, so that being said, then after that, that's kind of still, it's still, they don't approve the, the what we would call the bid set of plans. They don't approve the final construction document of the entire project. So we still work for the next month or so on finalizing that. Um, with this project and given the timeline, we may do the construction in several uh, phases. So you can, you may have heard, you can get a foundation to grade permit prior to having the full construction for the full building um, completed. We have demolition to do on the site. So those are the kinds of things that might happen earlier and then um, starting in, from January into March is when the actual construction of the building in 2021 will, will come up. So hopefully that's a little bit clearer. Yeah. Yeah, we're focused a little bit more on the current phases, but um, to just take that to the next level of detail, we have a program with the school that we're going to do on Friday. We shadow classes so that we see what the kids are doing at all times. When are they working individually? When are they in large groups? When are they in small groups? How do they flow from their classroom to the gym or to lunch or to recess? Because that'll help inform the design as we go. And it actually helps us create a more efficient building when we understand those things really well. So that's in process. We have a school team meeting on Monday. The concept, the DSUP concept, we're combining one and two. 
is due in early March. And right now we have advisory groups scheduled for um, the 16th of March and the 20th of April and a community meeting on the 22nd of April. But again, that's something that I think we're open to looking at to see if we need to add anything additional in there and then targeting the hearing. There's lots that happens between these two bullets, but just for the sake of kind of overlaying a big chunk of the timeline and the immediate detail, that's, that's what we're highlighting tonight. So that's really our overview for tonight. So any other questions? Um, I'm aware that the uh, ACPS has a budget for the project. Can you address how you will control construction costs so that we end up at the end of the day under budget? Sure, and that is really critical. We have another partner who's not with us tonight and that's Skanska and they're the CM at risk for this project. So we'll be working closely with them. Um, they've already started doing some cost exercises even on concept phase um, to make sure that we're targeting the budget for the project. As we move forward, we do it with them and we'll highlight anything that either could be um, optional or could potentially be expensive and we'll work those things through, kind of flag them from the beginning so that that can be part of an ongoing um, discussion. We also identify risks early in a project. What are the unknowns? What are the things that could come back and bite us? And we kind of keep track of those too and make sure there's adequate contingency for those and we start out with a larger contingency at the beginning and then as we're able to knock away those unknowns that contingency can come down a little bit because we want to make sure also that the school gets the full benefit of the budget as we go as well. So I mean it's a whole process that we're really focused on. Um, we have a, a cost estimator on our team as well who can be brought in to do um, targeted estimates if we want to get another opinion on cost issues. Um, but Skanska has lots of experience uh, developing schools and other projects in the area. And, um, you know, they are really on top of this. Okay, okay. just to add to, to what she just said, in addition to all this, we also have uh, the value engineering that Skanska will be handling. And at each stage, like now, at the concept stage, we, we receive a cost estimate, a cost estimate from Skanska. So after the schematic design, Skanska will also uh, run and, and, and give us a cost estimate. So we we are doing our best not to be above the budget that we have, mm -hmm. and that's the reason why we managed to bring Skanska ahead. Yes. As, as of now, Skanska is working as a design consultant where they try to work in parallel with uh, DLR mm -hmm. to make sure that everything that is designed is within the budget that we have. We also have a QA, QC process, quality assurance and quality control where we have a different team within our company <coughs> who's not involved in the production of this project at all review our documents at each milestone. And one of the things they'll look for are anything that looks ex excessive or questionable or where there could be a better value from a different approach. So it's really baked into the process. Could you give a more um, generic description of what CM at risk means? I know what it means, but I think uh, it would be good to explain that to the community, what that really means. Okay. Well, so there are different ways to deliver a project, and we can share this answer. I think um, the staff at the school system also are, are really knowledgeable. Um, the old traditional way was design, bid, build. We would complete a whole set of documents. It goes out for bid. Um, maybe the contractors are pre-qualified, or maybe it's open market. You open the bids, and you find out what the market says your project costs. Um, you 
you may not get the contractor who can really deliver the project well. Sometimes you wind up with a lot of change orders. Um, but that's one way to deliver projects. CEM at risk is actually, I think, a really good model for schools because what it does is it brings the um, contractor on early and they're going to bid, but they'll bid packages. They are going to be held responsible to meeting a price, but the price is developed after we've done a certain amount of design. Then they commit to that price for the quality of school that the school system has, um, has required. And so um, they take on the risk of price changes rather than the school system. And um, so there's some security in that. And um, you can pick that CM based on qualifications, not just price, but there's still going to be a competitive process to get you your, your pricing for the actual subcontracts. Is that more detail or less than people want? Okay, just, just to add a little bit on what uh, you said, the key thing here is a guarantee maximum price, which means Skanska, when we are through the design will tell us we are guaranteeing to build this school at this maximum price. So that's the very important factor. So which means we will not be worrying about cost of our own and stuff like that because Kanska, they guarantee we will do it at this price. And our job now is to make sure that the design is within our budget. Uh, I'm excited to see that the net zero strategy as um, one of the activities. I know there's some questions about whether the solar panels will be put on, whether the facility will be net zero ready or whether it will be net zero from the start. I think there was a mention about questions whether solar panels will go on later. Mm -hmm. uh, down the road, it was a, a question. I don't know if, if this, that decision has been made yet, um, or if this depends on the, the budget that was um, coming to that, that's, uh, field that released last night. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, so originally when we started this project, first of all, we advanced it two years in our capital budget. Um, we know we've been through kind of a quick process uh, with the community. And so one of the questions was, are we pursuing net zero? It's certainly something ACPS is interested. It's something DLR group does often. Um, and so what we had been communicating is that we will meet the new LEED gold standard for the, um, for the city's green building policy as well as net zero ready, which is what we have been saying. Um, we will be looking to explore, ultimately that's a budgeting and kind of an operations and maintenance issue. So when we get to that point, if we are able to purchase the solar panels within our budget, um, then we, will, we may choose to do so. Um, if we cannot, then we may be asking for the funding in a subsequent year so that we can achieve net zero. Um, but it really comes to the, the building will be designed, there will not be anything we have to kind of go back and fix or any change orders to DLR Group's contract or um, necessarily the construction management contract. Um, it's just something that we, it's not necessarily included in the existing budget. Um, so if, if that becomes a challenge, once the building's built and we want to get it up and running, um, we'll have to identify then. It's also kind of a, a commissioning and education of our own staff to make sure our operations and maintenance team who's managing, you know, buildings that are 100 years old and have antiquated systems, how do we make sure we bring them up to see, speed and provide them the resources to now operate, um, and for our school staff uh, to now operate a much newer and modern facility. Um, so yes, we're pursuing net zero. Um, but the actual budget funding and what year that we are able to achieve that um, will have to be determined once we get going. Um, just, just two things. One, I know there, there are a lot of different financing programs that'll that'll provide a lot of the capital cost up front. Um, but but curious when and who will make that decision as far as the timing. So it, it would be included as part of our capital budget um, that we do we go through an annual process. It starts every fall. So if by this fall we have a good handle on the pricing um, for the project and are able to get to that GMP with Skanska or 
get to a guaranteed maximum price, um, then we can determine do we still need funds, and if we do, then we can put it in a subsequent year. Um, and ultimately, that's we the school board uh, chooses to fund things in their capital program, and the city council adopts a budget uh, to fund the school school board's capital program. Any other? Oh. I just want to be clear. Um, from what I heard before, the demolition will begin this fall and construction then next year. Would that, is that the timetable that you were explaining earlier? And secondly, what is, what is the latest on the, um, the, number, the capacity of this school? How many students are you building for? So um, in relation to your demolition question, because that's something we can do uh, without the building permit approvals, that would be something that we choose to do first to kind of clear the site. So that's why in September, we'll have that council, hopefully we'll have that council and planning commission approval of the um, new design for this site, and then we can demolish. We don't want to demolish a building if we don't have an approved new school, um, and that's just kind of the first step. And then we would be begin uh, some of the site work that has to happen, the site construction, some of the foundation to grade work, and then the full building construction. So I'm just talking about in a, in a phase construction schedule given the timeline. And then related to your capacity uh, question, we are building this building for 825 pre-K through fifth grade students. So that's, that's what we currently have planned. Okay, any other questions? All right, well stay tuned. It's gonna be fun. Does anybody, since we have a little bit of time, does anybody wanna offer general comments? Um, regarding some of the things that will be determined in the schematic design. Maybe we could go back to that um, slide. If there are particular interests you have on the site, we'd like to hear those. In the schematic design, we'll be resolving the things on the left. So that's site organization and traffic flow, general landscaping, um, building massing, which we talked about what massing means before, the floor plan layouts, the approach to building materials, so brick, uh, different materials that the building could be made out of, um, our mechanical systems and net zero. So if any of those things in particular you would offer any comments or advisement on, No one has anything to say about traffic? This has to be the only meeting that happened. <laughs> Do you have a date yet for the delivery of the draft traffic study? No, we don't have it yet. Okay. The sooner the better, right? Yes. <laughs> Could you talk a little bit about general landscape approach and what does that mean exactly? I'm assuming that's not play space, that's just like the outside kind of curb appeal of the school or what does that mean? It's actually laying out the functional elements and the code required elements and developing, if we look at the sample, sample school here, maybe show it as a full slide. Um, you can see it actually will be fairly detailed um, you know, right now we're showing kind of three orange areas on our site plan for the school that are different play areas. We know that the ed spec gives us a list of requirements. Um, we're meeting most of those, but we're not quite fitting all of them. But a lot of them are not delineated yet. They're just these orange circles. Um, but by the end of schematic, we'll know where the early childhood play area is how big it is, um, we'll know where the other play equipment is, we'll know where the paved play areas are, um, you know, we'll know the general fields, we're trying to get the walking path or running path around the edges of the soccer fields, we'll have all that kind of delineated and fit out. 
We'll also know where the stormwater management is going to be generally. It won't be fully designed, but we'll have kind of figured out the approach to that. That'll take up some area on the site. Um, we'll identify some landscape buffers or landscape areas. We won't have tree plans yet. You know, we won't know what species we're doing, um, and we probably won't know exact sizes of areas, but we'll have things pretty well accommodated. So it'll give us a good overview of what's going where, and generally how big it is, but the character of it is still going to be in development. Does that answer your question? Yes. During previous meetings, there was some discussion of the bus loop and sort of if that needed to be as big as it was uh, designed on some of the early preliminary designs. Could you give us kind of your latest thinking on the bus loop and whether there's any possibility of it being multi-use, obviously with safety in mind there? Yeah, we'll go back to that site plan. So we had a, um, for this concept, we have an angled bus loop. The buses come in and stop at an angle. Um, which is a, actually kind of a great way to do it from a functional standpoint. Um, but we had drawn it originally longer than it needs to be, so we know based on the number of buses that can cut back a little bit. So when you see this the next time, we'll have recovered some of that space and, and given it over to kind of the arrival sequence. Um, so this dimension is generally to scale, uh, but this dimension will change. As far as using the space for other things, so for example at Patrick Henry we currently use our bus loop during the day for recess or outdoor play, um, especially given that the swing space will be over there. So that's definitely an option. We've also talked about opening that up um, for uh, parent parking or something like that, um, given that the rec center will be over there for after school programs. Yeah. Any other areas of concern or suggestions or issues you want to raise? Um, um, I haven't been to many meetings, but um, is the underground parking still an option that you guys are pursuing and is that um, viable? We've actually been directed to proceed with the underground parking. So on this, um, this concept, it's kind of under back here. We're not sure quite how big it is yet, um, but it's an approved part of the concept that we're proceeding with, which is great because that's more play space. And the triangle. <laughs> we have a question about the triangle area across the street, and at this point, we do not have plans to use this space for any part of the Douglas MacArthur program. Okay. Is everyone signed in? Yeah. Well, thank you all for coming out. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for coming. And I know they showed um, some of the potential future meeting dates. I'm, I'm always yelling at people to use my stuff. Um, they showed some of the potential future meeting dates. We are uh, hoping to add a community meeting in March, so just be on the lookout for that. Um, and we'll see you then. Thanks. <laughs>